What if I told you that it was possible to make $100,000 in one year sports betting? Well, that is exactly what I'm going to be talking about in this video. I'm going to be detailing you exactly how you can make $100,000 in one year, just one year, betting on sports. As for me, my name is Matt Modai. I'm a content producer and betting analyst for oddsjam.com. In a previous life, before I was working at OddsJam, I was actually a full-time uh, data analyst. So I always had a passion for sports, always had a passion for numbers, found a home at OddsJam kind of combining the two, and I used kind of an analytical approach to sports betting to profit betting on sports. So in this video, I'm just gonna be walking you through the steps and the math behind making $100,000 in a year. Before I get into it, I would appreciate it for those of you watching, if you could like, comment, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Also find me on social media at my Twitter handle that has flashed on the screen here, at Jedi Modi, also listed in the description of the video as well. Let's just get right into it, making $100,000 in a year sports betting. Now I'm gonna break this down into five simple steps when it comes to this process. Step number one, this is the most important thing. You really can't do anything until you do this first step, and that is understand your bankroll. Now your bankroll is the amount of money that you're comfortable dedicating towards sports betting. It's an amount of money that you have to be comfortable living without because you're going to be investing it in the different sports books. So understanding your bankroll, incredibly important, I get a lot of questions from people asking, what should their bankroll be? Like, hey Matt, what should my bankroll be? And I always tell them, it has to be a number that you come to independently, right? You have to look at your own financial situation. You have to look into your own risk tolerance, something to think about, how much money you're comfortable dedicating, what your financial situation is, what your expenses are and everything like that. But it has to be a number that you come to independently. And as I mentioned, it's the amount of money that you dedicate towards sports betting. Now, there's a couple of things to keep in mind when it comes to your bankroll. Number one, unfortunately, it takes money to make money. Now, I can tell you right now before I get into the details, this is not an overnight get rich quick scheme. And it's also not a scam. I'm going to be detailing the steps, but you have to understand that it takes money to make money. So the only way in order for you to get to the point where you are able to profit $100,000 in a year is from building up your bankroll, which leads me into my second point regarding your bankroll is it's not static. It changes over time. I can only speak from my personal experience. I started using OddsJam with a $500 bankroll. I profited like 1200 bucks in my first three weeks sports betting with Odds Jam. And then I've slowly increased my bankroll from there. So just because you're starting with a lower bankroll doesn't mean that that is going to be the case through the entire life cycle of your betting history. You can increase it as you go on. Now, again, another point about this is I get a lot of questions from people asking when they should increase their bankroll. And it's the same thing. It's totally up to the individual based on their comfort level. If you start with a $500 bankroll, and you were like me and you profited 1200 bucks in the first three weeks, well, then you can use those profits to increase your bankroll. So increase it from 500 to 1000, and I'm only increasing my bankroll based off the actual profits that I made. So that's one strategy. As your profits increase, you increase your bankroll as well, taking into account those profits. But I can't give you the specifics. It has to be something that you are comfortable with individually, and it has to come from your own situation as I keep mentioning, that stuff's important. So step number one, understand your bankroll. Two subsets of that, understand that it takes money to make money and that your bankroll is constantly evolving over time. Now, step number two, also incredibly important, you need to understand the sports betting landscape of your state. Now, if you're an individual like me located in Colorado, you're in the gold mine when it comes to sports betting. There, last time I checked, there are 26 legal sports books that are operating in Colorado. New Jersey is right behind Colorado with over 20 legal sports books. So what you need to do is understand the betting landscape of the state that you live in. Colorado and New Jersey have the most legally operating sports books, but that doesn't mean you can't do it in the other 48 states. You just need to look into your state and see what type of sports books and everything you can sign up for. 
If you're in a state like California and Texas, you can use the DFS platforms, right? So understanding your sports betting landscape, incredibly important. Now, step three, and this is where we start getting into the nitty gritty of how this is possible. You need to take advantage of the sign up bonuses that sportsbooks offer. Whether you're in a state where you can use the FanDuel and the DraftKings of the world, or you're in a state where you have to use the offshore sportsbooks, regardless, there are always going to be money to be made from sign up bonuses. Now, I have my screen shared here just to walk you through a bunch of different sports books and what their sign up bonuses are. I'm pulling this information from legally regulated sports books that are operating in the majority of states that has legalized sports betting. So if you're in a state where you can legally bet on sports, you can take advantage of all of these different types of sign up bonuses. Now let's just go through it. DraftKings has two. Number one, a new customer deposit bonus. So I mentioned that it takes money to make money. This is a perfect example of that. If you sign up for DraftKings, they will give you a 20% bonus of up to $1,000 of what you deposit. Basically saying if you deposit $5,000, they will give you a free $1,000. Now, that is something that needs to be played through. That $5,000 needs to be played through in order to get the $1,000. But you've literally just made a free $1,000 if you have the bankroll to support it. So I mentioned it takes money to make money, and this is a perfect example of that. But that's a free $1,000 that DraftKings is offering. Here is another promo sign-up bonus that DraftKings is offering. New customers bet $5 on any pregame money line and win $150. It doesn't matter if it is a favorite or if it is an underdog. You just literally bet $5 and you win $150. So DraftKings that's only one sports book that we're looking at, is giving you a free $1,150 for new users. That's a good start in terms of building your bankroll. FanDuel is offering a sign-up bonus of $1,000. So basically the way FanDuel works is if you are a new user, you can risk up to $1,000 on your first bet. And if that bet loses, you get $1,000 credited back to your account. Now there are strategies in terms of how to best take advantage of the deposit bonus and the sign-up bonuses that sportsbooks offer. I will get into that. I first just want to detail how much money there is to be made specifically on the sign-up bonuses. So that is $1,150 from DraftKings. That is $1,000 from FanDuel. Caesars has something similar where you can get a free bet up to $1,250 if your initial bet loses. So it's very similar to the FanDuel one, where if your first bet loses, they will refund you in terms of bet credits up to a certain amount. In Caesar's case, it is $1,250. BetMGM is the same exact offer as FanDuel. It is $1,000 on your first initial bet that they will refund you. PointsBet has a couple different promos. Over the course of time, they've changed. Right now, the promo that I'm seeing is you can get up to $500 in free bets with points bet. So not quite as generous as the DraftKings, the FanDuel, the Caesars, the BetMGMs of the world, but it's still a free $500. That points bet is refunding your account. WinBet is not quite as generous as even points bet, but it's a free $100 in terms of bet credits. So you bet hundred bucks with odds minus 120 or greater, and you get hundred dollars in bet credits. So the difference with win bets is your initial bet doesn't have to lose in order to get the credits. You will literally get that $100 credits regardless on win bet. So at least that point is a little bit different. And then, so Bet Rivers is very similar to uh, FanDuel, Caesars, BetMGM, and PointsBet, where if your first bet loses, they will give you a refund in terms of a free bet up to $500. So you put all of this together and you're getting a risk-free bet amount total of $4,200. Now, the DraftKings offer, you have to deposit 5K to get a $1,000 deposit match, and they will also allow you to risk $5 to win 150. So with DraftKings, you're essentially depositing 5K and you are getting a free $1,150. Now, that's a lot of money that the sportsbooks are giving you just to sign up. So I've heard a lot of users that have literally built their bankroll solely off of the profits that they made from new user signup bonuses. I've heard of users that literally profited 20K 
on all of the different sign up bonuses. Now I mentioned it depends on your state, but even the offshore sports books have sign up bonuses. So again, make sure you understand the sports betting landscape of the state that you live in. And then the next step is to take advantage of these different sign up offerings. Now I mentioned there are two different types, right? There's the deposit match and there's the risk free bet. Now there are strategies to profit in both of these different scenarios, which I will detail, starting with the deposit match that DraftKings offers. So when you have a deposit match, the tool you wanna to use is the low holds tool on oddsjam.com. So just go to oddsjam tools low hold and it pulls up this page here. Now, before I get into it, I will say, I literally just came out with a video that details everything about what a low hold is. It can be used for more than just the deposit match. For the purposes of this video, I'm specifically going to talk about the deposit match and how you can use a low hold. But what the low hold page does is it provides betting opportunities where you can bet both sides of a bet, right? An over or an under, or both teams to cover the spread. And you will, no matter what, you will break even, right? You see the 0% here. You can bet both sides of a game, both sides of an outcome, and you will literally break even. So the strategy of what to do with the $5,000 playthrough bonus is use it on a low hold. Basically what you're going to be doing is going to the low holds page, filter specifically for DraftKings, and then it's going to show every possible DraftKings situation where you can place a low hold bet and break even. The goal of this is you place the $500 bet on DraftKings, you place the opposite bet on another sports book, and you will have broken even in terms of the results of that individual bet. But because of the sign up offering that DraftKings offers, you get a free $1,000. So you are essentially paying $5,000 to get a free $1,000. That's kind of how it works. Now, in terms of the process behind it, all you need to do, like I said, you filter specifically for DraftKings, and then it pulls up every situation where there is a 0% low hold on DraftKings. Then what you need to do is click this little calculator here, and then this calculator you see pulls up on the screen. So what we're gonna be doing is risking $5,000 on DraftKings, and then it tells you what to do on the other side. So in this case, we are placing a bet with BetMGM. We are placing $10,500 on the BetMGM side, and no matter what, we're getting a total payout of $15,500, regardless of who covers the spread or who wins or who loses. So we're getting a total profit of exactly $0. So here's another example of why it takes money to make money. So I don't wanna be shy or just totally breeze past that part of it, because it does, like I said, a thousand times now, take money to make money. But because of this situation, you have just now gotten a free $1,000 on DraftKings. So that is how you take advantage of a deposit match. Now, the free bets are a little bit different, and there are a couple different strategies when it comes to a free bet. But what I'm gonna detail in this video is the strategy to best maximize the amount of potential profits that you can make. So there are two different steps of a risk-free bet. The first step is actually placing the risk-free bet. Now, if that bet loses, you will get that amount in a free bet and the free bet is a little bit different. So when you're placing a normal bet, right? The normal bet, not a free bet. If your bet wins, you get your profit plus your initial risk. So if you risk $100 and you get a profit of $100, the sports book will give you a total payout of 200 bucks, right? Your 100 risk and your 100 profit. For a free bet, because you're placing the bet using bet credits, you no longer get a payout, including your initial risk. So if you place a $100 free bet and it wins and your profit is for $100, you only get the $100. So the strategy is a little bit different depending on what bet you're placing. But in terms of maximizing profits, the best way to maximize the profit of a risk-free bet is to place it on something with longer odds. And when I say longer odds, I mean something plus 300 or greater. So if you're looking for an example of what bet you should use your risk-free bet on, I recommend going to the free bet converter tool. So you do literally, just, again, oddsjam.com, free bet converter, and it pulls up this page that you see here. So again, we are only talking about step one. Now let's pretend that you have the risk-free bet on FanDuel. So you wanna place a $1,000 bet on FanDuel. Again, you filter 
specifically for FanDuel, and you find a bet that has odds of plus 300 or longer. Again, that is the best way to maximize profits. So you could place your $1,000 bet on this Celtics Blazers under 209 and a half at plus 900. Now you're going to say, okay, but why would I do this if it's unlikely that the bet hits? Why would I place it on something with longer odds? It's all about just maximizing the potential profit. If you place a bet at plus 900 odds, you only need to win roughly 10% of your bets in order to be profitable. So if you place this exact bet on FanDuel at plus 900 odds, and this one hits, and every other bet that you have loses, well, guess what? You will still be profitable from this interaction. If your $1,000 bet at plus 900 odds wins, you will get a profit of $9,000. And the rest of the sports books, specifically of the ones that I talked about, is only $3,000. $200. So you would literally have profited from winning one bet. Now imagine if you win more than one. And that's the reason why you want to place your bet on something with longer odds, like I said, plus 300 or higher. So for the examples of where your bet doesn't win, you then have a free bet up to that amount. And what you want to do, you still want to stay on the free bet conversion tab, and you want to use the free bet converter to convert that free bet into real cash. But I will say you can only do it at a certain percent. So in this case, the best example is you could convert that $1,000 free bet to roughly 81% of what the free bet is, which is exactly what the percent says here on the far left. Now, in order to learn the math behind everything, it's the same concept. You click the calculator and it tells you exactly what to do. You type in the free play amount, which is $1,000, and you place your $1,000 on the free play line, which is plus 900, you place the other side of the bet on the hedge line, which it tells you exactly what sportsbook and what the odds are. So it's Caesars at minus 1,004 odds, and you will get a total profit of roughly $815 of the initial 1,000. So if you think about everything from the holistic view, you will essentially risk $185 for a potential profit of 9,000. And you will do that for every single sportsbook on here, for FanDuel. BetMGM, Caesars, PointsBet, BetRivers, WinBet. You will do this exact process for every single one of these, and you will essentially be risking 19% of whatever your initial risk is for potential profit, like I said, of possibly $9,000. So there is a bit of variance when it comes to this because you're obviously relying on something with longer odds to hit. But when you do it among five to 10 to 15 to 20 different sports books, you will be surprised at how often you can get one to hit and then fund your entire process of using the sign-up bonuses. Now, for an example, the OddsJam co-founder, Alex Monahan, he hit a $1,000 risk-free bet at plus 1,400 odds. So from one bet, he profited $14,000. So it is absolutely possible to get these to cash. You just have to have a little bit of an iron stomach and accept that there is a little bit of risk involved. But again, takes money to make money. And that's the whole thing about profiting when betting on sports. All right, and that is how you can take advantage of the sign-up bonuses. Step four, you need to find your edge. You need to understand where you have an edge over the sports books, whether that is with a specific sport, soccer, basketball, football, whatever, whether it is for a specific market. You know, you kill the first half totals in the NBA, or whether it is with a system, a model, whatever it may be, you need to find your edge. But before we get into that specific part, I first just want to break down the math behind $100,000 in one year, because that's a daunting number. You think of $100,000 in a year, that's a little bit scary, but let's break it down by month. So if you want to make $100,000 a year sports betting, you need to profit roughly $8,300 a month, right? 100,000 divided by 12 equals 8,300. That seems a little more reasonable when you break it down like that. And, but we can keep going further. If you want to break it down by week, how much money do you need to profit a week in order to make $100,000 in a year? Well, there's 52 weeks in a year, so you divide 100,000 by 52, and you get a little bit above 1,900. So you need to profit roughly 1,900 per week of sports betting in order to profit $100,000 a year. And then if you break that down even further per day, you need to profit roughly $275 a day over 365 days to get that 100K. Now, a couple points to note regarding the math behind it. It's not going to be a straight line up 
to get to that 100K. There's gonna be some ups, some downs, some ups, some downs. That's the nature of sports betting. One day you might profit $1,000. The next day you might lose $500, right? That's just the nature of the beast. That's how it goes with sports betting. But as long as you average out to these numbers, right? 275 a day, 1,900 a week, then you will get to your 100K. You just have to accept that there's going to be variance involved with sports betting. You know, in an unfortunate reality, sports are unpredictable. If they weren't, if everybody could predict what happened in sports, they wouldn't be nearly as exciting. You know, those four years where we got Cavs, Warriors in the NBA Finals every single year, not quite as exciting when there is a wide open field like there is this year. So you have to understand, you have to have an iron stomach and just understand that you're going to have down days. As long as you are placing bets that you know have an edge, then you will be good in the long run. But as long as you stick with it and understand that you do have an edge and that these types of things happen, it's something that will work out in the long run. So finding your edge is important and then understanding the math behind everything is important as well. So when it comes to finding your edge, I mentioned there are a bunch of different ways you can do this. Now, there are some people that can create models that literally predict scores better than the sports books. If you can do that, perfect way to find an edge. I will say that is incredibly difficult. The sports books are smarter than you think. They take in a ton of information when it comes to pricing their odds and pricing their lines. That is very difficult to be better than them. It is possible. There are people smart enough, but it's very difficult. For me personally, the way that I have found an edge is from positive expected value betting. So I will share my screen and walk you through the positive expected value tool on Odds Jam. But first, I do want to just describe what exactly it means. And when you are positive expected value betting, you're placing a bet that you know as the sports better has a higher percent chance of winning than the reflected odds of the sports book. I'll say that again. Positive expected value betting is when you are betting on a play that you know is going to hit at a higher percentage than the implied odds of the sports book. Now, I understand that that's a mouthful. So let me break it down first, not even talking about sports betting, but just talking about flipping a coin. So everybody knows when you flip a coin, 50% chance heads, 50% chance tails. That equates to plus 100 odds in sports betting. But let's pretend that I am flipping a coin that's actually weighted and it's gonna land on heads 55% of the time as opposed to 50%. So I know as the sports better, the coin flipper, that this is gonna hit at a 55% rate, but I'm placing bets with my buddies and they only think it's gonna hit at a 50% rate. And that 55 to 50% gap, that is the definition of positive expected value betting. I know that the coin is weighted towards heads and is gonna land 55% of the time, but the implied odds of the sports book, my buddies, is only giving this a 50% chance of hitting. Well, I'm gonna bet on heads every single time. Literally every single time, I'm gonna bet on heads. 45% of the time, I'm gonna be wrong, and that is gonna be frustrating. But I know that in the long run, it's gonna land on heads 55% of the time due to the weighted coin. That is exactly what positive expected value betting is like. Ajdam provides betting opportunities that are going to hit at a higher rate than the implied odds that the sports books are offering. So let's get into that. So this is exactly what the positive expected value page looks like. You can filter for a bunch of different stuff, EV percent, specific sports book, sport, league, market, date, individual game, and then by max odds and market width. But when you're looking at the page, let me just detail exactly what these different concepts mean. Your percent. This is your percent of expected value, can also be viewed as your profit margin, the percent edge you have over the sports book. I'll get into how that's calculated in just a little bit. The recommended bet size is the amount of money that is recommended that you actually bet on this play, and it is being calculated using the Kelly Criterion method. The date, just the date of the game, the event is the game itself. So this first one here is an NBA game between the Thunder and the Suns. Market is the market that you're betting on, and then the bet is the actual bet that you're going to take. In this case, it's Devin Booker over two and a half made three pointers. I know that the over is the positive expected value play because it's got the highlight around it and it's bolded. The book is the odds in the book that you're placing the bet on. So in this case, it's plus 140 odds at bet 365. 
And then the Novig odds and market width, I'll explain in a little bit. If we're just looking at the positive EV page as a whole, the bet that I am placing here is Devin Booker over two and a half made three pointers at plus 140 odds at bet 365. That is the positive expected value bet. Now let's chat about these no big odds here because you're gonna ask, okay, we knew the coin was weighted 55%, but how do we know how likely a bet is to hit? And that is what these no big odds represent. So every single positive expected value play is going to have odds here under the no big odds column. These odds are viewed as the perfect line of what a market should be priced at, the most accurate line of this individual market. So in this case, we are betting on Devin Booker over two and a half made threes at plus 140 odds. Well, the odds jam perfect line prices this at plus 130. So we know that this is gonna hit at roughly a rate of plus 130 odds, but we're getting it all the way up at plus 140, 10 cents higher. So that is how we know what the win percentage of a bet is it's based on these no big odds here. Now, the next question you're gonna ask is how are these no big odds calculated? It's a great question. So when it comes to sports betting, I mentioned that there are a bunch of different sports books, right? We see a bunch of different sports books up here. If I click this play, it pulls up odds from a bunch of different books. Well, we see odds range from plus 110 all the way up to plus 140. That's a $30 difference, right? If I'm risking a hundred bucks on Caesars versus a hundred bucks at Bet365, that's a $30 difference. So because sportsbooks have different odds, that also means that some sportsbooks are better than others at pricing odds, right? If we go back to this example, we can't have one book pricing a play at plus 110, another book at plus 140, and have them both accurately reflect what this Devin Booker market should be priced at, right? They both can't be that far off and both be correct. It'd be like if two stock exchanges had one Apple stock trading at 300 bucks a share and one at 200 bucks a share. Both of those can't accurately reflect the Apple stock market, right? It's the same thing with sports betting. So one of these books is right, one of them is wrong, or they're both wrong and the truth is somewhere in the middle. Regardless, they both cannot be right. So once you can accept that a sports book can have odds that are, put it simply, just wrong, then you can kind of understand, okay, well, are there some sports books that are consistently more wrong than others? Or the opposite of that, some sports books that are consistently better than others at pricing odds. And the answer to that is yes. And those sports books, those sports books that are considered sharp, that are right more often than not, those are the sports books that feed into these no big odds here. So the process behind everything, the way it works, is Ajdan back tested thousands and thousands and thousands of historical betting opportunities, collected all of this data and used that data to determine what sports books are consistently the best at pricing odds, what sports books over the course of time are most often correct and where they have odds priced. So Ajdam collected all that data and let's pretend, okay, there are five books that are consistently better than others. Well, what Ajdam does is pulls lines from those five sharp sports books and removes the VIG using a weighted average. So these no VIG odds represent a weighted average from all the different sharp sports books in the world. Basically saying, all right, we're not gonna be better than the sports books at pricing odds. But what we can do is figure out what sports books are the best and then take advantage of sports books that have mispriced odds. That is exactly what is going on here. This true line from all the sharp sports books in the world have this priced at plus 130, we are getting it 10 cents higher at plus 140. So when you are positive expected value betting, this is the edge that you are finding. And to go back to the percent here, the bigger the gap between these two numbers, the bigger the percent is going to be. Basically saying like, if there's a wide gap between the true line and the line of the odds we are betting, there's going to be a higher percent of expected value, a higher edge, a bigger edge over the sports book that is placing the odds. Now, market width is not something super important to understand, but just to explain it, Pinnacle Sportsbook is generally regarded as the sharpest sportsbook in the world, and market width calculates the difference between the Pinnacle odds. So we see one side at minus 157, another side at plus 116. Well, if you subtract 57 by 16, that equals 41. The market width for this play 
is 41. It's calculating the difference between both sides of the pinnacle line. Now, the lower the number, that means the less juice that is being applied by a pinnacle, right? If these numbers are close together, it means that they aren't pricing a ton of difference between one side and the other side, which means that there is a low percent of juice being charged. I don't look at market width as heavily as I used to. So if you're watching a previous video and you hear us talk a ton about market width, that's not as important anymore because the way the Nova gods are calculated have changed, kind of minimizing the importance of market width. But for those of you who are curious why that's there, that is exactly it. But that's exactly what positive expected value betting is. So you want to get to your $275 profit in a day. You just want to hammer positive expected value bets from the positive EV page, right? The more bets, the merrier. That's something called the law of large numbers. If you place two bets off from the positive EV page, you're not really giving yourself enough volume to capture the edge that you find. Now, if you can get that number of bets up to like 40, 50 a day, then you are just letting the math work out in your favor. So in terms of my advice of how many bets you should place, whatever number you're comfortable with, essentially, as long as it's a total risk amount that you are comfortable risking, right? You're comfortable betting a thousand, 10,000, five thousand dollars in a day, more bets equals better. So if you're currently debating between less bets for more money or more bets for less money, you definitely want to go that second route. You want to place more bets and you want to place them for less money. The more bets that you have, the more bites at the apple, the higher chance you have of letting the mathematical edge that you have from positive expected value betting work out in your favor. So that's the edge that I personally find the best when sports betting, positive expected value betting. That's step four. Step five, and my last step for this video, you just need to track your bets. You need to understand if you are profitable or not. You need to understand where you are profitable, and then you can make decisions on what to do better. You know, I, I mentioned sample size. I try to tell people, give it like 500 to 1,000 bets of positive expected value betting, and then the, the numbers should work out in your favor, it won't work out for every single human being. That plays 500 to 1,000 bets, but 98% in terms of the math of those people will be profitable. But you need to track your bets. Luckily, OddsJam has a bet tracker that is completely free to use that also syncs directly with your sports books. So I recommend going to oddsjam.com, signing up for the bet tracker. Like I said, it's completely free. And if you want, you can also follow other people's bet trackers as well. Like my personal Ajdan bet tracker is free for the public to view. The link for it is in the description of the video. But you need to track your bets and understand whether you are profitable or not. And that's it. That is the five-step plan of how you can make $100,000 in one year sports betting. Step one, understand your bankroll. How much money you are comfortable dedicating towards sports betting understand that it takes money to make money and that your bankroll changes over the course of time. You increase it as you are profiting. Step two, understand the sports betting landscape of the state that you live in. If you're in a legally operated state, perfect. Sign up for every sports book. If you're in a state like California, Texas, Florida, still possible. Sign up for all of the DFS platforms like Prize Picks, Underdog, all that good stuff. Step three, Take advantage of the sign-up bonuses, whether you are in a legally or non-legally regulated state. There are still sign-up bonuses to take advantage of. Step four, find your edge. Find the area where you have an edge over the sports book. The easiest way to do that is positive expected value betting because OddsJam does all the work for you. And then step five, track your bets. Understand whether you are profitable or not, where you are profitable, where you are not, and make decisions based off of that. And that's it. So hopefully this video was helpful. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to reach out. Please, of course, remember to like, comment, and subscribe to the Ajdam YouTube channel. Then hit me up on social media on my Twitter at Jedi Modi. And that's it. So I appreciate everybody watching and have a good one.